Here is your friend, Pastor Yemi Omoboyega again. Good morning. God bless you. Thank you for patronizing our channel. Please, there is one thing we are doing that we all need to be conscious of. You know, sermons are preached in the church. And when it get to, gets to practice, the sermons are sweet. But we do not take active role or play active role in the implementation of what we are taught. And that is affecting our society, it's affecting us as individuals. It is the doing aspect of that sermon that is important to you. Now, th this leads me to what I'm about to say. Anytime we say, please subscribe to our channel, any blogger, or any um, whatever, will ask you to please subscribe to his or her channel press the notification button so that you get to know when he or she uploads new videos, like the videos, and then um, pass your comments as you deem fit. You see, all these are things that will help the, uh, the blogger as well as you, the viewer. Because you see, sometimes you post a video, as many as thousands of people will watch, but there will be nobody that presses either like, nobody's, nobody presses the subscription, nobody share by past comments, nobody, um, nobody presses the notification button. Do you know the importance of all these things? What you are hearing, is in the passive mood until and unless you act on those various requests, which is supposed to be the mutual, mutually benefiting from the, 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 the person who recorded has given you information or knowledge or everything that you ought to pass to others who need them. Are we all saying that we don't have people that need all these things? People have problems and they want to solve them. And information like this could help them. People are stranded in life. They need information to re revive them. So please, when we ask for all this, don't forget to subscribe, to share, to comment, to like, and to press the notification button. They have important roles to play. Let, let's not be like people that listen to someone and do nothing about it. It will not profit them. So let us have the interests of others in mind. God bless you. Ah, this morning, I want to talk about water being our enemy. Water, yes, you heard me well. You hear the song that um, Fela sang. Water, you know, get enemy. I can now categorically say that you may bring a friend to water, and the water you are befriending may be your enemy. Um, just as about I was about to record this video, I heard over the radio that. In, in the Oyo state, uh, in Ibado, to be precise, that 11 local governments have recorded cholera outbreak. 11 local governments out of, I think, about 23. So you can see that people's lives are not safe anymore in these local governments. And they had been, uh, to date, in Ibadan, I'm told, over the radio, Crest Radio, that there are 230-something people reported cases of either suspected or confirmed cholera outbreak in that major urban city. Please pass this information across to all your people all over the place, not just in Ibadan, because it spreads like wildfire. wildfire. And the major cause of it is water. So you can see that water may become your enemy. 
You see, you may love water, but the water may not be your friend. Now, <clears throat> what leads me to this um, investigation that I carried out personally? One day, I just about a week or two ago, I started ruminating on my state of health. And I started asking questions. You know, Bible says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. First, I started from the medications that I'm on. I'm on anti-BP medication. And I've been on it for about 26 years. I take amlodipine every day of my life. And then I begin to question it that, oh, is this how I will be taking this medicine? Knowing fully well that there is no medication that does not have side effect, especially the orthodox medications. Amlodipine is very good. If you read the leaflet that contains the description and everything, you will see that if you read the side effect, you may not want to take it. But thank God also that in medicine, the people have really tried, scientists have tried, as they are giving you BP medicines, they will give you the other medicines that will uh, counter the possible negative effect of it. So, for instance, for the BP alone, I'm on three medications. One of them is the amlodipine. I don't want to tell you the second one so that you don't go and buy it off counter. I won't tell you the third one so that you don't go and because I don't, I'm not leading you towards self-medication, not at all. I'm thinking of what we save rather than destroy your health. So let's leave that. So I know that the three combinations are doing their work very well. But initially, when I started my investigation, I suspected maybe this, the side effects of AMLODP may be a major contributor to the, um, to the noticeable health challenges that I had. How did I arrive at that? Or what did I do next to really verify what I'm saying? I went on to a diagnostic diagnostic center and I did all the nest I mean the necessary um, investigations there the five 45 major organs of my system were examined using that diagnostic um, equipment and out of the 45 um, about four or five major organs were discovered to have challenges. Number one, kidney has challenges, needs attention. Number two, heart, my heart needs attention. You know I'm on amlodipine. Number three, my liver needs attention. Number four, my prost the state of my prostate needs not only attention, but an urgent attention. And for your information, this prostate thing, I have detected it through this process of investigation for in the past 10 years that the thing has indicated that, you know, prostate is enlarging and it is a disease for men generally only few will escape it so and it does not become aggravated until you are about 60 and above about 60 years of age and above it may have been growing gradually but the speed the rate at which it was it will grow will not be too obvious until you are 60 years and above so you can imagine, if all these major organs 
are having challenges and nothing is done to either slow them down or if curable cure them you will see that a god willing if i i mean i'm 67 now if by the time i am 70 years the situation may have probably gone worse by the time i'm 75 it may have been going down 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 and when people are aging you discover that you see they will start deteriorating gradually 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 i know of a gentleman be shortly before he died the number of ailments that were in, the system, in his system in fact i understand that the children were well to do and they even deposited over seven million naira to a major hospital in the Kitty state you know you know to be able to treat this man but the man is going is about 80 years old and you see at that point money failed woefully they did not even complete all these um diagnosis or whatever they've not even gone anywhere with the treatment before the man passed on to glory you see gradually as we are aging we are deteriorating we are deteriorating we are deteriorating it is a fact of life but what will lead to people's multiplicity of health challenges we need to understand so by the time I did those tests, I now asked myself, when the results were out, I said, yes, thank God that I knew this. I remembered in year 2024 alone, I've done repeatedly six prostate tests because I didn't want to take chances with it. Six post prostate tests test when I say that is the number of times I've done it in 2024 between January <coughs> excuse me and October that I'm recording now six times to verify the result I got the highest result I got was 8.4 the next report I got was 7.5 I got one interesting result also 1.28 that's number three i got another report when i started treating it because prostate is treatable if one is careful enough and quick to respond and then the next one i did was 5.5 the next one i did again was 2.8 and the facilities i used where okay the seventh one that i did or the sixth or you may be counting but whatever is it the number the one i just did before recording this video that one does not tell you the percentage but it indicates in colors green is good yellow is something is beginning to happen blue is mildly affected it's, get, it's getting uh, weaker and weaker then red is that the thing is real it needs immediate attention so the, the latest one i did again reveals that it was in a red state because i've actually thought at, at that it was over i stopped the medication i was using for prostate that brought it from the first figure the first figure was 8.4 and it brought down to 7.5 and it brought down to 5.5 it brought down to 2.8 you know i said in between i had 1.28 after that 8.4 what i got because i said ah let me verify from another lab i went to a very reputable lab in uh, Festac, lagos uh, clinics diagnostic center and i did the test it gave me 1.28 now I was wondering what 
What is responsible for that? So that in fact, I had to send a message to the place where I did it in Ibadan that look, your diagnosis may maybe your system, your machine is having fault. Maybe anything, you know. I told them I said, but that I I've, I'm afraid because one of the things that kill patients most is wrong diagnosis. I said, if this your report, I said, by my very, the follow-up test I've been doing from the beginning, to, before I did this last one, I said, there is none that has indicated more than uh, 4.0 because the acceptable level, the maximum acceptable level for medical intervention could come in is when you are above 4.0. At 4.0, there is no alarm. But the last one I did was 2.8 or so. And all of a sudden, it went to 8.4. I asked myself, what could have been responsible for this? I didn't change my diet. I didn't do some other things. But I knew that I was not using the prostate medicine. By the time I now returned to do the test, it has read the 8.4. I was afraid. I said, what is happening? So I said, let me go and confirm. The next lab that I went, like the clinics that I went to in Lagos, I got 1.28. So I said, ah, yeah, this is normal. No cancerous nature. No, it's not over. So this is normal. That's the report. That this is a normal prostate in, that could happen. Normal. But that first one was abnormal. So I queried it. I told them, I said, please check your equipment. So this is your report. The, the report you gave me contradicts the report that I got from a supposedly better diagnostic, diagnostic center. So I just left that. I now told them the implication. If your diagnostic uh, diagnosis is wrong, it means that, you see, if you give me 8.4, that, you know, it means that I need instant emergency operation or whatever, maybe to remove the prostate and so on and so forth. And if the actual or correct diagnosis is 1.28, which means I am subjected to, you know, an unnecessary surgical operation. And of course, everything we do is risk. What if it goes wrong? Or if if the if the treatment or the operation is not successful, what could that be? It means you, your your diagnosis could have led me to <clears throat> probably a greater problem. So now I now said, please make sure that you check your system. And I also tell, told the diagnosis center that, look, another implication is this. That now that I know, and I want to claim legal whatever from you, that your diagnosis can kill somebody and that you are falsely giving me. You see, but all at the same time, I will say, okay, uh, machines could go wrong. There could be human error. They could, there could be the fact that one may have taken the report of one person for another in all the places I did the, mind, the diagnosis. So I now said, let me go to the third place. And when I went to the third place, that one says, that's a federal uh, facility, federal medical facility. And that one gave me 7.5. I said, huh, something is going on. Then I went to a, another state medical facility. That one gave me 5.5. .5. Then I went back to another federal medical facility. That one, again, this time around, gave me 2.8. Though there had been intervention, of, I've started using a prostate. There are a lot of them online. I've started using one of them. So I said that thing must have been stemming it down. Another thing that possibility, remote possibility that I know is that the first report was 8.4. The second report was 1.28. So what could be happening around that place? I could not, the only explanation that could come to my mind is that this prostate thing comes on and goes off 
comes on and goes. It means it is a fluctuating thing. So it may be responsible for the different reports that I had. But with the by the time I started treating it consistently and I discovered that it has come back to pull 2.8, then I felt com comfortably you know, that I don't need any serious uh, attention. That could happen to any system in our body. So all these investigations, okay, I think one other area of my system that had issues, the issue of, um, you know, when you are growing old, you begin to experience blurred vision. I was experiencing that, and I've been treating it for the past five years. Then I now ask myself, maybe amlodipine, the effect of amlodipine, or other medications that I'm using, could also be responsible for the um, blurry ears, but eyes. By the time I did the various uh, scans, you know, I in fact the first report was that it was scary, scary, because there are a lot of liquids that deposited inside my retina that was blocking my vision to the point that. It got to a point I could not, I almost could not see at all. Then it got to a point also that after the intervention being treated, I started seeing little by little, little by little. And it started improving. But after some time again, it started getting worse. Then when medical intervention comes in, it will improve. So it's like, <laughs> that I now ask myself, what could be the cause of this problem? I, I started checking my lifestyle from the very beginning, at least for the past 15 years. After I retired, I knew I got a kind of, my lifestyle changed. You know, previously I was working hard, I was doing everything, burning excess things in my body, that the body need, does not need and all that. But when I became, I retired, apart from farming, which I took as a hobby then, you know, no other thing, but activities were. And then the kind of food I was eating. And I discovered that, okay, I have to begin to caution myself on the kind of foods I, I should be eating. Then I changed my lifestyle. I removed something like sugar, whether it is in the form of natural or natural, which, natural, which is honey, or uh, um, synthetic or whatever, which is the normal sugar in the market. I started reducing that because I drink tea a lot, if there is any problem. I drink tea from the waking of the sun to the, setting, the, the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun in the evening. And even at night, um, I was a tea addict. I knew that. And of course, milk is there, sugar is there, the tea itself, the components of it. And then there is also something that I really got engaged in also, a new lifestyle, smoothie. As a farmer, I grew cucumber, I grew tomato, I grew watermelon, I grew a lot of various um, kind of um, all these uh, fruits and um, something like that. I even tried growing carrot. Then I grew banana, plantain and all that. So it got to a point that somebody introduced smoothie to us. That is, we will mix oranges, banana. Um, I'm telling you all this so that you begin to check your own life, especially when you are approaching 60 and above. Now, I will mix, I will blend banana, cucumber, watermelon, um, um, oranges, just to mention a few together. I will enjoy, you know, with the campaign that fruits and vegetables are good for your body, we thought, I thought we were doing something good. Then it was around that time that this eye issue began. And when it began, I never knew the source until it got to a point that I was seriously affected. 
So I started removing all these things, stopping those habits. Because the, the combination of all these food, number one, practically all of them are sugar-based. They all contain a measure of sugar, whether high or low. Watermelon, for instance, is almost, in, ter in terms of sugar content, it's almost as bad as drinking Coke, drinking soda. So, you see, and banana, you don't need more than one finger if you are an elderly person. You don't need more than one finger a day to give you whatever you want. Then, um, cucumber, that's good for your slimming and so on and so forth. But combination of all this also could cause problems for your health. So I started separating that. And then I started eating raw tomatoes then for prostate started if i would but i won't combine them at a go so that's how i started adjusting and adjusting and adjusting then i started seeing some improvement fluctuating improvement i'm yet to fully recover from the blurry eye thing but thank god at least i'm seeking knowledge and i'm getting results so after all this, when this latest result came out, I now queried, I, I went to the medications I was taking. Maybe there is drug interaction. All of them are prescribed, but the doctors that prescribe them are different. And no doctor will ask you, which, what are you taking? They just prescribe for you. And some of them may have contraindications. So I now said, okay, I was on Aplodipine, I was on the other one and the other one because I don't want you to go and buy them off the counter. So when I analyzed it, I now queried it. What are the side effects of all this? Excessive intake of vitamin E can affect the eye negatively. The eyes need more of vitamin A than vitamin E. So what are the components of all this either supplement or uh, normal treatment or mamlodipine or whatever that I'm taking? So I discovered that, okay, no, at first I concluded that, well, I want to, in fact, I said, I want to do away with all forms of orthodox medicine. Although the fear is in me that if I did without doctor that, uh, doctor, doctor's advice, in fact, it will be fatal. Because if you do away with something like that is regulating your BP, by the time the BP shoots up, you may go into stroke, and that may be the end of it. Then I was afraid of that. I said, what could I have been doing? Then I said, uh, I couldn't do that. Then what I did was I started monitoring my BP every day. So I will stop taking the amlodipine and its uh, components when my BP is not giving me a challenge. Then I will then, um, <laughs> but when I notice that it is rising, I will start taking it. I have seen a situation where I was on for about three weeks to four weeks before the thing started rising, and I started taking it again. So after some time, when it has gone down, I will also I know it is the residual effect of the ones that are taking that made it to prolong so long. So I have to be careful. You need to monitor, have knowledge about your own health. So I said, if I have my way, I wanted to do it because I suspected I'm the pain that I've taken it for so long. It could cause problems. But now that led me to the test. When they told me my vision, my heart, my kidney, my liver, and my prostate needed one form of attention or the other. It's only the prostate that is on the highest, that is on red. But thank God it has medications. Then I said, I, I even want to do away with the orthodox. I said, I'm now, I'm seeking for alternative source of treatment. I said, how about this herbal Treatments, because today, thank God, there are machines with which they will diagnose, diagnose you for what you needed, and then you can get, they can recommend, the machine itself can even recommend some products for you. So that was where I went, and I did the test, and he recommended so many things for me. I said, okay, 
then let me tell you one aspect of it that you need to know. Those of you who are still younger and you are not making provision for your old age, <laughs> the day of reckoning, your day of reckoning is coming. No? You need to save, 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 save. Not just putting money in the bank. You need to be having something that will give you heavy income at your old age. Because it's not all of you that will be qualified for pension and with HMOs and all that, it's not all HMOs that will do you well because of the cost. The cost of medication is too high, whether it is orthodox or harbor. Let me warn you in advance. Let me counsel you in advance. Let me advise you in advance. No amount of prayers will solve it for you, especially those of you who are uh, in the habit of relying on say religion God performs miracles yes but I will tell you that some miracles will not happen because what your habit will prevent them from happening and my discovery was scary to me to use that language scary to me so I, I'll disclose, disclose that as we go on so please no matter how much you are earning now, number one, start doing your annual medical checkup from the age of 40 so that you will see. You know, it is when I did this test. I don't waste for um, anybody to counsel me. Me, I will go to the, the, to the laboratory. I will meet the lab person or doctor. Please tick various things for me that is commensurate with my, that needed to be checked. That's the principle I do. I go there, they will tell me, and then I'll go to my doctor. I've been to the lab, this is what they found. What is it that will be used to stem it down? All right? Look, I want to tell you, to just one injection as of today in an optical center can cost you over a million naira. If your eyes are damaged and needed injection. Of course, cataracts today, to treat it in all this high bro medical center where you can say, okay, you have confidence in the ability of the specialist to handle, is over a million naira, just one operation for one eye. If you have it on two eyes, that's over two million naira. Then glaucoma. To operate it also is over a million naira, one. And the, the painful side of all these treatments is that they are not permanent. And why? Two major reasons. The medications themselves, especially the injection, has expiry date. That is, when it has faded out of your system. Two, your habit, things you are eating, things you are... The second one will shock you, your water. May be the major source of the problems you have. May be highly acidic, such that it is causing more damages to your system. You know when you go to a hospital and then they will say, drink more water, drink more water, drink more water. That water is water therapy, water therapy. If you are drinking water that is less than alkaline water <laughs> that is less than an alkaline water you are polluting your system toxins come from the food you eat and majorly again from the water that you drink that is why when you are 60 years and above you need to know yourself you need to be financially prepared to tackle your old age symptoms, otherwise people will die before their appointed time of life. That's the truth. By God's grace, I'm 50, 67 now. But the life expectancy rate for Nigeria today is between 56 and 58. <laughs> Thank God I've gone past that one. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. And if I say that in this world, if there's anybody that surpassing or is equivalent in terms of 
taking good care, medical care of themselves than me. That person must be a genius. I don't mind how much anything costs. I don't mind. Look, the tests I've been doing for prostate alone this year, I say six times. There is none of them that cost less than 14,000 naira. And the medicines I'm buying, eh? and in these days of um, inflation, hyperinflation, the cost of those medicines, sometimes, okay, let me say, sometimes one medicine, medication, either herbal or orthodox, can cost as much as maybe 30, 40,000 per, um, per pack. And you may do like two, three, four of that. Either in a month or in a space of two months or three months. Then, and you may need like three, four, or four combinations of these drugs. All right? And if you don't take them together, you might run into trouble. I've been treating the eyes, and my discovery from this investigation is that, one, amlodipine may not even be the cause of my, my earlier conclusion that the orthodox medicine is the cause. It's not true. By the time I did the analysis of the waters that I am drinking, that you, my viewers, are drinking, I found that water, this, the water we are drinking may be 60 to 70 percent responsible for our ill, Ill health. We are not near anywhere. Oh, you say, okay, but I drink pure water. It's been processed. I drink bottled water. It's been processed. You are deceiving yourself. When I went to that diagnostic center, the gentleman asked me to go and buy the, any water, pure, bottled, everything. I bought them. He took me to the lab tested the waters in my presence. He said, I should open the bottle by myself so that you won't say there's something I did in between. With my Koro Koro eyes, alkaline water should be, the best water that will enter into your body should be about 9.5. The bottled water that I bought, by the time it was tested, it was 4.5, highly acidic. One to 4.5. So, 4.5 to 9.5. If you minus that from 9.5, you have 5.0. To get to the level of the water that is needed to give me excellent health. And I drink these bottled waters, sachet waters, with pride. Then I bought sachet water. By the time they did the um, test also, interestingly, it read practically the same thing with the bottled water. So the difference between them is just the bottle and nylon. Both of them are unsafe. So, number, okay. Now, I went ahead and said, okay, let me go and get the well water that I'm using, the house that we use most of it to cook, to, uh, I mean, to drink tea, to do other things, to bathe. You know that your body is drinking water as you are, as you are, as you are bathing. So I did that one also. Interestingly, my well water even rated better than the bottled and the sachet water. It, it read 5.0. So it's only 4.0 below the standard. That one is 4.5 below the standard. So all the waters we are using, go to your house, please. Go to a place where they can test the pH level of your water and ascertain the 
standard of the water you are drinking. And then you will be shocked. Because uh, uh, the acidity in your body blocks the opportunity for even the medications you are taking to work. It is toxic. And you need to flush toxins out of your system from, especially when you're over 60, from time to time. Apart from the type of food that you are eating, you know, cutting down on fatty, cutting down on um, anything fat, cutting down on sugar, cutting down on starch, cutting down on, um, I mean, concentrating more on proteinous food. Avoiding red meat, avoiding all the avoidables, avoiding the smoothies, in quotes, <laughs> that can destroy, and thinking that you are building your health. Avoiding all that. Thank you. So, you will see that the pH level of your water is so low and so, I mean, so deadly, or it's so bad. Let me use the layman's language. For your health and this is what we are drinking and then you know that another source of toxins is the air that we breathe in so your sources of toxins or ill health come from majorly from the total environment one the water you take in two the food the type of food and the way you take them three the um Food, water, I think the third one is, uh, just skip my brain now. If I remember, I'll bring it up. So water, food, and air, God bless you. So these three sources, you would breathe in, even when you use, um, what do you call it? Nose masks, especially as we did during the COVID-19. It may only reduce the possibility or the rate at which you can be affected. As long as you are still breathing in water, there are toxins, there are diseases, there are bacteria, there are viruses, everything inside. And when you combine it with the water you are drinking, and you combine it with the toxins from the food, and now, you are taking medications. Like I told you, if you are, if you are better than me in taking good care of your health, then you must be a genius. I spend less money on staple foods, but spend more money on medication, whether herbal or orthodox. You will see that by the time you do all that, you have contamination in the air that you are breathing, you have heavy contamination in the food that you are eating, and you are having heavy contamination in the water that you are drinking. Where is your life? Your life is in danger. That is why all these organs are, the kidney is working, is processing things that it is not strong enough to process. You see, the more, you, the older you become, of course, the weaker these things. So they cannot process as they were doing when you were younger. The heart, the same thing. The liver, the same thing. You know that all this medication, this is your sugar and other some medicines that you take. If the liver cannot process it, sorry, if the, I, I mean, I'm not a medical expert, but I, I listened a lot to medical experts. There are some things that your kidney will reject and send it to your liver because they are not nature-based. Your, your liver will now process it by force. You are killing your liver, some your liver. And from the food you are eating, the fats, maybe you are gaining cholesterol from palm oil. All forms of oils are dangerous. That's my conclusion. They are all adding up to kill you. And you go to church, part of the people that contacted cholera in Oyo State, in Ibadan. They got that cholera from the intake of the water that they took to the church for the church to pray to, pray on for them to use. 
using faith, attaching faith that it will work. And what do they get in return? Cholera. Is it not better that they know that even the water itself is highly acidic? That's why it seems as if our prayers are not answered. Because we lack knowledge and we lack understanding about our state of health. So, I mean, what you expected to save you is killing you. Even in its natural state. Look at that water. Bottle water, sachet water, well water, borehole water. None of them got to be standard. Now, now that I tell you about the expensiveness of maintaining your health at old age, let me tell you. Now, to get alkaline water, Google it. To produce alkaline water, the smallest equipment you can buy that I Googled, that I found, is that you will spend one point, between 1.2 million to 1.5 million to buy the smallest equipment that could give you proper water 24 hours. And then the maintenance cost to buy the filters alone, you may spend 100 and 200,000 and above in one month to buy the thing. Look at the expensiveness. One of the diagnostic centers, when I got there, I now said, okay, so supposing I want to be producing this water so that I will do away with all these unnatural waters that I'm drinking. He said, ah, uh, I said, how much will it be? He said, like, like said, about 7 million. And true to when I Google, there are categories. 1.2 2 to 1.5 for household use. Then maintaining it with about 200,000 facilities, let's say every month. Then the one that the next ones are like 2 point something million, 3 point something million. I found the one that is up to 8 point something million. So it depends if you want to go industrial. So that guy told me, that you will need up to if you are talking business, you need up to 7 million minimum to be able to do that. And that excludes the running cost. You know, the higher, the more expensive the um, um, facilities or the various components that you need to maintain them will be. So look at that. If you are spending like, to buy the equipment, you spend like 8 million including installation. Now, okay, I said, what if I am not, I want to be buying the water? A 0 0.75 CL eh? of water, let's just say the size of sachet of water, of alkaline water, costs a minimum of 8,000 naira. That's zero point, that's your bottle water, that small bottle water, cost 8,000 naira. And if I were to drink that, at least if I want to drink like two liters of water, such water in a day, 0 0.75, at least I would drink four of that to do away with our natural water. 8,000 times four. 32,000 cost of water alone. But if I'm able to take this water, it will eliminate all the various diseases that are affecting my organs. But can I afford it? That's why I'm saying, even if you can't afford things like this, begin to check your lifestyle so that you don't complicate your issues. And part of the ways of checking your lifestyle is don't spend your money on things that will kill you. And at the same time, make sure you have fat account uh, to dedicate to your health when you are above 60 years old. And you have been taking precaution from age 40 doing medical checkup, and you have been doing some things to maintain your health to get to that level. All of us have potential to live up to 120 years. It is not the enemies at home. It is not the enemies in the church. It is not the enemies anywhere. It is not spiritual matters that are killing us. What we are, is killing us is our ignorance. Look at the analysis I've been giving to you just on what is responsible for the wearing and tearing of the system. If you don't know them, you may die any day. 
And you are so wise in quotes now as to be living a wayward life, drinking alcohol, not exercising, and taking self-medication, and doing all sorts of things. Look, you can see that our enemies are many. That's why you will pray, 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 pray. But let me tell you the kind of prayer I prayed that led me to this. Just a day or two before I started these investigations, I prayed to God. I said, please, Lord, lead me to know what I can do to make my health best. I cannot afford to spend. Thank God for the support I'm getting here and there. I cannot afford to be spending like maybe taking two, three, four injections in a year at one, one million. Naira. I can't even afford it. I can't even bring in my children to come and be doing all that. Even the diagnostic center that I went to, by the time they gave me the combination of the alternative um, herbal medicine that I was given, instantly, we have to spend like 300,000 naira. I had to beg my children to support. And God bless them. They did. But for how long can they sustain that? You can see why this year children can run away from us when our problems are getting so much. We are not talking of parents that have too many children or that they have already heaped the burden that they brought into the world upon their children who are taking care of the number of children they recklessly gave birth to and who may have run away from home, not wanting to talk to the father or mother anymore. Okay, by the time I did my own test too, what is recommended to me is about 300 plus thousand. And we have to quickly get that. Then I said, do my wife's own. Her own case too, she has her own challenges that if we sit down again, we will need like the same amount. Two of us will be coughing out 600,000 naira just to start you. And I may have to take that for about three, four months regularly. So 600,000 for the two of us per month times three, four months. You know what that means. Where is the money? Even if I own my own business that is big, that is bringing in heavy money, how would I have afforded that consistently? And if we are not doing that, our life spans have been cut short. That's why I feel moved that I should share this with you. Life is expensive. Life, in fact, if what I'm telling you now, I've understood it from my early days. <clears throat> Probably I will not have as many children I have. Not too many for my age. All right. Number two. Probably I would have been so self-centered preparing for my old age that I would have not remember anybody for purpose of help, of lifting others up. Number three, I would have stopped eating certain food from my younger age. I would have been going through annual medical checkup. Thank God I'm doing that from my place of employment till I retired at 51. And I continued even more. I told you in this year alone, I've done it six times. Prostate alone. I did for heart. I did for liver. I did for kidney. I did for all that. The full blood count. The everything. This was, those who knew me know that I don't compromise my health. Apart from treating sicknesses that are, you do know that our immune system, if your immunity is low, you are in trouble. I am somebody who has low immunity. If I'm in a place that is too airy, I'm in trouble. You can see me, you know, touching my nose now because it's already itching me, reaction. If I'm in a place that is too hot, I'm in trouble. 
If I take ordinary orange, which is good for health, what do you call it? Vitamin C concentration. If I suck that orange, just one, one, because of the sugar content in it, I will develop constipation. I studied myself. I will develop constipation and incidentally malaria. If I drink a bottle of Coke, because of the sugar content, heavy sugar content, I will develop that. The only way I take orange now that doesn't affect me seriously is I will not just squeeze the liquid alone. I will eat it raw with everything inside. So the fiber and everything will help to push out the uh, liquid which my system would have just easily absorbed. And so you can see, I study myself. <laughs> I was discussing with one of my doctors. Doctor, well, have good luck. I told you, like, in those days. I said, Doctor, I said, I do take some medicines, so, and but I know them. I read the, the, the possible complications before I take them. He said, one of the things that is killing an average man is knowing what to do and not doing it, waiting until you see the doctor. By the time you now wait to the doctor, you would have killed yourself. Self-medication is good if you know what to do, but self-medication can instantly kill you if you do right the wrong combination or you don't read the side effect. Anytime I buy a medicine, one, I look at the side effects. I look at the possible drug interaction with the ones I'm using already and so on and so forth. Before I swallow one. And once I start taking the medicine, as simple as pro code for Qatar and all that. Once I finish a sachet and the situation has not improved, I'm going to the doctor. I'm going to the lab to find out why. I did sinus, sinusitis, what do you call it? Sinusis or whatever. You know, the blockage of all the passages here and with mucus and the nostrils blocked. If I stay, stay in an uncomfortable environment, my nose trill inside will block. The two of them, I can't breathe again. I, it has been operated upon more than four times. Full operation. Not until I got a doctor recommended one anti-allergy something for me. Did I know peace? And that has been happening to me from my youth. The number of days I breathe with my nose in the in a year when i was younger up to the age of maybe about 30 it's not up to 30 days in a year i breathe with my mouth even while i'm sleeping that's how terrible it could be so know yourself you know to know who you are what you should take and what you should not take avoid self-medication that you don't understand the implications of those drugs. You don't know the um, adverse effects it can cause. That's why education is very important. And you should be able to put one plus one together before you can act wisely. So, my dear listeners, don't forget you will be, it will be unfair on your part. It will be uncaring on your part. It will be unloving on your part. If you don't share this message with as many contacts, even your enemies, as possible. Share it to them. Then this message will move you to subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed. I'm giving you my life experiences so that you better your own. Subscribe if you haven't. Thank you for those of those of you who have subscribed. If this message benefits you, please press the notification button so that you don't miss out on any of my messages. These days, I have resolved to send, to post at least two videos per day. It could be more, depending on my ability. So, in summary, what have you gained from this? One, prayer. Alone will not solve your problem. Pray for the direction, for understanding. That's no wonder King Solomon asked for 
wisdom and understanding. Pray. You let your prayers center around not making money. Tell God to show you the direction with which the money will come. The businesses you will do. And the how to manage your money so that when you are old, you will have the opportunity of maintaining your health and enjoy yourself in old age so that you won't die early. So prayer is good. It is the prayer that I pray for direction as to how to discover what is the real problem. And I discovered that water is 60 to 70 percent responsible for the weakness of those organs. And I am treating them now. And I pray that God also will make those things to work for me. So seek wisdom, knowledge, and you know, Bible, when the Bible says, my people perish from lack of understand, lack of knowledge. One, knowledge of me, knowledge of God. If you run away from God, you will lose out. You won't have somebody to pray to, to even give you direction. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 says, the Bible is written for us to bring us closer to God, teach us doctrine, to guide our ways in life, to correct us when we are going wrong, to instruct us on the proper path to follow, to Reprove us when we are missing it. Everything leading us to righteousness. Knowledge. If there is anything you must not miss in this world, knowledge, and it comes through the knowledge of God and the knowledge of the ed education which you gain through your education to develop the skill that you can market to make the money you are looking for miracle to give you. No. No. <laughs> It is miraculous enough for God to give you direction and lead you in life to be able to discover all these things that I'm discovering so that you can live a peaceful life. Now, I know that this is not my mother's or my mother's uh, or my stepmother's that are killing me. Water, the water that is closest to me is affecting me negatively. I need to do something about that. I now know how expensive it is that the budget for water alone, if I drink four bottles, let's even say just four bottles, I mean two bottles of that water in a day, or four in a day, that would be 32,000 naira times 12, um, times 30 days. That everything is going to about 400 and something thousand for water alone. The food that I'm eating, I know that I have to select them. The fasting they are recommending to you in the church. Fasting is good if you know how to do it. But it can, can kill you. No two bodies are exactly the same. If your GO is fasting 90 days and he has better medical facilities and he's eating right, he's exercising well, he's doing everything. You that don't do all that, that you don't even have good food to eat. And you go and fast for 100 days, you will die. Your faith will not heal you, but it will kill you. Because you are ignorant. Ignorance is the mother of all calamities and failures in life. If you don't have knowledge of how to invest your money and where to do, you will fail. If you have no knowledge of understanding of your health, you will fail. If you have no knowledge or understanding of you know, your environment, you will fail. At 60 and above, the kind of food you are eating must be different, drastically different from what you have been hitherto eating. Otherwise, you will die before your time. I am, above all, I'm able to reel this research results to you. Then, don't tell me you won't share it. Don't tell me you won't subscribe. Don't tell me you won't like this video. Don't tell me that you will just keep it to yourself. Share it to your wife, share it to your children, share it to your friends, share it to your enemies. Share it to the entire world as far as you can reach. This is the gospel. The real gospel that profits you is not the gospel that tells you you will meet miracle, your enemies are pursuing you. In fact, all these messages, die, 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 they are killing you. Your heart will palpitate irregularly. 
you will develop raised BP, stroke will come in, and at the end of the day, may you not waste your way. That will not be your portion. I think, let me stop here. I remain your friend, Pastor Yemi Omogbo Yoga. I'm giving you practical solutions to the issue of your life based on my 67 years of experience on planet Earth. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> what a wonderful one. Instead of committing your life to suspecting people, this one is responsible for a failure, this one is responsible. Put all those ones aside. Go for wisdom. Go into the books. Go into the internet. Go and research. I googled most of these things. If I can, <laughs> those of you are saying you don't have money for data, you would rather preserve your money to eat. Continue to eat your toxins. I would rather eat less food and buy more data now to gather wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that will make my life better. How about you? <laughs>